Hey guys, Dislitter Magic here, and Wizards just announced something utterly shocking. I mean, this is so unexpected, I still can't believe it. When I heard about it, I thought people were messing with us, um, or that they got the date wrong. No, there's another Masters set coming out in 20 frickin' 17. The release date is November 17th, 2017, so not that far away. Um, and it's going to be 249 cards as usual, 24 boosters per box, 999 MSRP per booster, so basically a master set, and they're calling it Iconic Masters. Doesn't that sound like the ideal Masters from uh, Skyrim? So this does sound like a little bit of a watered-down version of Modern Masters, um, because as they put it, um, it's some of the most powerful cards in 23 years of Magic history. So it's, it's Eternal, which is Commander Vintage Legacy. It's, I guess, Casual, obviously meant for draft because it's some of the most powerful cards just ever printed in all of Magic. So if they're not sticking to just Modern, since, well, basically nobody plays the other formats, I mean, Commander isn't exactly hauling in the money unless they quite literally print Commanders in the set, which, well, they might. I mean, I'm throwing it out there. They might do it. I don't think that would do good things to the prices because, well, only people who built the deck need that one commander and they only need one, but, I mean, I really think they might put some famous commanders in here, like one specific to the commander sets. So let's go by what they said. Specifically, um, it brings an array of massive angels, sphinxes, demons, dragons, and hydras alongside some of your favorite and most memorable spells. I really thought they were going to end that sentence with planeswalkers. So I really don't know why they would choose to put those examples in, because let's see, Angels. Now, I haven't been playing that long, but Angels, I mean, there's a couple, maybe $30 ones. Um, there's like a lot of $5 ones that are famous and whatever else they use to describe it. Sphinxes, I can't even think of one that's valuable. Um, Demons, I mean, you got like Grizzle Brand and... Any other one is worth a little bit less that I've ever heard of. I'm really only familiar with modern, though, so I might be wrong. Um, dragons. Well, for demons, we might see Obnixilus before he turned into a planeswalker, maybe? I don't know. Dragons, okay, that could be anything, but honestly, still, it could be um, Nicol Bolas, maybe? I don't know. Actually, I think I was thinking of Nicol Bolas before he turned into a planeswalker. I think that was a card. I don't remember if it was him or Obnix or both. All I remember is the artwork looked absolutely like crap. And the last example was Hydra's um, Mist Cutter. That's it. And that's probably like $3. So not exactly an inspiring list. I mean, it's almost safe to say there's 10 dead cards because they gave five examples and put an S on the end of all of them. Now, I love a lot of the Angels cards. I love a lot of the Sphinx cards. I love a lot of the Dragons. Not a big fan of Hydra's, but I mean, some of them were pretty powerful. Yeah. I mean, Progenitus might be in there, okay, but even he's not that expensive. I mean, they're not naming money here. They didn't say anything about Planeswalkers. Oh, boy. Now, Iconic and Most Powerful are not completely interchangeable either. So if we were to base this on how much power and value they put in Modern Masters, 2017 edition, I should say, uh, okay, you know, I'd, I'd be confident in this succeeding. But they have also said um, a lot of the cards are going to have alternate artwork. So this seems really collector heavy, like really from the vault-ish. I'm definitely getting that vibe because people will be like, oh, I remember playing with Stoic Angel or Sarah Angel or whatever. So they'll reprint that. I mean, I guarantee Sarah Angel is going to be in here. I mean, come on, iconic. Yeah. But, I mean, I think Sarah Angel's like $3 or $2 or something. I mean, she's not that great. So, if it's just cards people know and are they're famous and people played with them and they want some nostalgia or whatever and now they've got new artwork, I could see the collectors going nuts over this. But collectors versus actual, like, modern and commander players, oh boy, they do not outnumber them. Not even close. It seems like every time they try to do, like, a collectors-only thing... People really only care about the power. I mean, even FTV, some of them are like $100 and some of them are like 30 I mean, I love blowing stuff up. That is like my thing. But from the Vault Annihilation, they refused to put Damnation in it. And I think it was missing like one other card too. 
like the most iconic blow up cards. Hello. It was basically board wipes and massive destruction on a large scale. And I think it's sitting at about 33 bucks on eBay, which is below MSRP. And it came out like, oh, at least two or three years ago. So sorry, but collectors cannot prop up a product. So this better be like actually good and actually valuable. Um, now they, they called it a iconic and power packed draft experience. Oh yeah. People are going to draft the hell out of this, but still, you know, $40 draft minimum, like 30, if your store wants to be nice, I guess. So this could be disastrous or it could be really good. I mean, the disastrous part, the evidence is everything they've said about it. And the promising part that would make it be a mad success is what they just printed very aggressively choice-wise in Modern Masters 2017. So this could go one way or the other or be very in the middle like the other Modern Masters were. But let's not bury the lead here. What the hell are they doing printing another master set in 2017? First of all, people only have so much money. Secondly, that's Christmas shopping time. That's not an ideal time to bring it out, um, unless you're going to get it as a gift or get it for somebody as a gift. And third, everybody's saying, what the hell are they going to bring out in 2018? Because they've never done Modern Masters back-to-back. -back. I feel like they will, though. Like, they left enough cards out of 2017 that they could very easily do MM18. There is almost no logical reason to skip a year. I mean, just give people what they want. So now it's like, oh, let's bring this out now, out of nowhere. They've never done two master sets in a year, as far as I've heard or seen. So it sounds like they took Eternal Masters, which was not terribly successful, I guess you could say, and uh, mixed it with Modern Masters. So it's just noteworthy, powerful cards from the entire history going back to Alpha. So I think we might see some Mox Opal, some Lotus Petals, some Liliana of the Veil. Vale. Um, I mean, it's not like, like Liliana's pretty lore heavy, but are they going to go out of the way to print the most powerful one that was just printed? Maybe. Tarmogoyf, I mean, he's iconic. Like, that has to be in here. I think they're going to surprise people by uh, printing Elspeth, uh, Sun's Champion, or whatever the last one was. Uh, because everybody's like, oh, she's dead, I miss her. I don't. She way overprotected herself. She was way overpowered. But 249 cards is a big set, although not for Masters. That's actually very typical. So they're going to have to fill it with some serious stuff. Now, the one interesting thing is it's only printed in English, Chinese, and Japanese. That is it. All the other languages, screw you. And they've been uh, kind of doing that lately. I think the other Masters were the same way, at least recently. But I've noticed when you take every single product, including, like, From the Vault, uh, or actually, no, not From the Vault, um... Plane Chase Anthology, that one I think they dropped one language, and then you look at um, uh, the upcoming set, uh, Arch Enemy, I believe they dropped like another language or something like that. It, I just remember a downward trend in the language variety, which I thought was weird because the game's getting bigger, but maybe they're cutting costs or they, they couldn't move them or foreign distributors were getting mad or I don't know. I'd hate to, like, be in America and have a French company make it a game and then they release it, like, one set only in French that I actually want. I'm certainly not going to learn French. So we don't have any artwork at all. No, you know, box or, or booster covers. I'm sure they'll leak that quite a long time from now. So, you know, have fun with that. I love waiting. It's my favorite thing. Isn't it yours? The real question is, are they going to continue to say, screw this WPN crap. Nobody follows it. It does nothing. People who are pretending to be in the WPN program and are just having a store over order for them and actually sell a thousand boxes online. Somehow we still allow that. So if we're going to continue to allow that, we either crack down and lose buckets of money because um, that's what would happen or we just open it up to everybody instead of playing games and then the people who are doing this feel a little bit less shady. I think there's about a 99% chance they are going to let non-WPN members open this. Oh, not, not open it. Order it. <laughs> or open it. You can do whatever you want. Hell, you can open it. You can just go buy one and open it. So, considering what I made in Modern Masters 2017, I'm going to place an enormous order for this um, and hopefully not get screwed on it because I think my order initially was like 3500 or something for MM 2017 because we knew next to nothing about it. We, we I don't think we even had the artwork at that point. So, they'll be asking me for orders before we know anything about this set and that pisses me off it pisses off every store every vendor because then if you try to go back a little bit later and increase your order they are not going to let you fyi little news story that got buried 
most of the people who were complaining about not getting their Modern Masters 2017 boxes, they were talking about their second order. They tried to increase their order after the fact, so keep that in mind. Now, I had heard stories about Southern Hobby just chopping the crap out of people's initial orders because apparently they hate small stores and like to favor the big guys. That's why everybody loves them so much. I mean, I even heard specifically that they cut a bunch of small stores orders and sent them directly to one guy in northern Illinois. He orders like three million per set from them or whatever, and so they just favor him because they don't want to lose him as a customer. So little tiny stores, screw you, you get nothing. That's really fair. Now, this is only a rumor, FYI, but um, from what I've all heard about Southern Hobby, it sounds exactly like something they would do. But for everybody else, like people saying, ACD distributors cut my order. It's because you called three weeks later and tried to up your order. And then they said, we'll do our best. And you took that as like set in stone. So no. So people blaming any other distributor, they're, they're probably just being greedy and stupid, which not really because you, stupid is ordering something blind without knowing anything about it, making a really high, artificially high order of it. You know, it's really stupid the way Wizards does this. So, I mean, I've never cut an order ever before at my distributor. I decided not to cut my Amon Cat order because a couple of the cards look kind of good and now they went down 75%. Oops. I'm sure I'm going to lose money on that, but I'm going to stick to it because, um, you know, whatever. I'll sell them sealed locally if I have to and piss off my LGSs. Whatever. But I'm going to make an order of probably eight or 9,000 at least for Iconic Masters just... Hoping that Wizard sticks with what they've been doing lately. If they're wrong, I will call up and cut my order. I'll just tell them, hey, guess what? Um, if you make this order, my credit card will bounce. Or not bounce, get rejected. Oops, some stuff came up. It won't be true, but you know what? I'm sick of Wizard screwing me over. I'm not going to sit here and lose thousands of dollars every set that fails and Wizard still collects my money. Screw that. You know, screw the distributors too because they're not always fair with me either. And especially screw Wizards. If your set doesn't look good, I'm not buying it. The end. Welcome to the free market. With all the shady crap going on in the MTG resale world, I'll be not even on the tip of that iceberg. So what do you guys think? What cards do you want to see in it? What do you think will be in it? Do you have any good uh, examples of angels, sphinxes, demons, dragons, or hydras that don't suck? If you do, I'd love to hear about them because that would be very inspiring. So I'll see you guys next video.